honestly, to invest in anything, there's like probably nothing more important to me than having babies, especially doing what I do. And so it's like, I, I, it just would be silly. Like I will regret this more than maybe anything in my life. So nice to meet you. I'm so glad to see your face. Thank you so much. It's so glad that we can finally see each other. I'm sorry, I know. sorry that things are under a different circumstance right now. You know what? It we're we're going to make it the best we can, I promise. I hope so. Okay, so talk me through the process. What do you need to know from me? And sure. then with this. So, I, some of the faint things that are really important for me is I wanted to go over your age, okay? okay. And, if, and also, if you've ever been pregnant before, if you've mm -hmm. ever tried to be pregnant before, mm -hmm. and any kind of fertility test that you've already done, these are really emo really important for me. And then we're going to talk a little bit about your gynecologic history, about like your periods and how regular they are, history of any STDs, medical problems, surgeries, things like that that could be affecting your future fertility and childbearing. So I'm 32. Okay. Um, I, the only fertility testing I've done is I did do an AMH through modern fertility. That's actually what got me going on this whole thing. Cause I was like, I didn't even know what AMH was, which is crazy from an L and D nurse to not even know what this is at 31 years old. AMH is the hormone that's released from the eggs of the body. So if mm -hmm. your AMH is high, it means you've got a lot of eggs all releasing a little bit of AMH. So when you do your blood test, you'll have a lot. The AMH is going to be low when there's low egg reserve. I wouldn't expect necessarily a labor and delivery nurse to know anything about AMH because it has absolutely zero to do with childbirth, but it has a lot to do with people's fertility overall. And it's the number one blood test that I would recommend if there's one thing you want to do, just one quick blood test. It doesn't have to be timed with your period or your cycle or anything. You can be on birth control. You can do it whenever you want. And can it's a very Anytime. Okay. On birth control, not on birth control, breastfeeding, not breastfeeding. It comes from your eggs. So it doesn't get really changed or altered during your cycle at all. So my AMH was 0.76 a year ago. So in your early 30s, having an AMH level that's below one uh -huh. is a concern. Okay. It's definitely a concern. Um, so being proactive and doing everything you can. There are still people that have lower AMHs that are younger and their body responds really well to the medications that we give. And they're still able to come get a lot of eggs out. Every month when you release that one egg during ovulation, there are a bunch of eggs that kind of die off during the process up to like a thousand or more. We're trying to recruit some of those eggs that are gonna die off anyways during the process of your egg retrieval and stimulation medications. Okay. So the purpose, of giving you these medicines is to make a good number of stuff of, of follicles that are little casings of eggs. And then those are the casings and the eggs we're going to go after on your egg retrieval day. Okay. When the level starts to go down, in general, when AMH started and it came out, people would say if your AMH is lower than one, then you have low reserve. If your AMH is over one, you're great. But it's not that black and white. Okay. We realize that if you're like 30 years old and it's 1.1 above one, that's actually a really low number for someone in their early 30s. Mm -hmm. We also realized if you're 44 years old and it was 0.95, which is below one, that's actually an amazing number for a 44 year old. So I like to delve in it a little bit deeper and make sure that for the age it's appropriate. And I'm not going to lie to you because I'm a straight shooter, but we're going to see the good in it. Okay. okay. You could have been someone who never checked their AMH. I know. And when you meet Mr. Wright at 37, 38, it could have been zero and not been able to have a child, but you were really smart and you were very proactive and checked this important blood test. And now you want to freeze your eggs. So I'm really proud of you for doing that. Now, well, thanks to social media. And I mean, this has been the whole frustration with the whole thing. It's like, how come we don't talk about this stuff? Like at 25, if I would have had had a low AMH, I would have froze my eggs at 27, you know? So this is where like, why I'm so passionate about talking about this stuff. Cause it's been so like not devastating for me, but it's been like a bummer. How many eggs do oh, you think I can get? This okay. is why, this is why I love people like you that are going to be open and yeah. honest and educate people and mm -hmm. just not make this topic a scary topic. No. That's why this is so incredibly important, mm -hmm. okay? 
talk me through the process of what would what I can expect, what I should be doing now until retrieval, right. the whole thing. One question, a couple of quick questions. Any history of sexually transmitted diseases that you want to tell the world? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, are your periods regular? Yes. You are a pap smear. When was the last one? Was it regular? It was regular. I've only had normal pap smears and it was in, within the last year. Perfect. Have you ever done a mammogram? No. Okay. Any family history of breast cancer? No, my mom, my mom has had like multiple biopsies, but nothing. Positive. Okay. Fantastic. Any medical issues at all? No. At childhood asthma. That's it. Okay. Any surgeries? Uh, I had my wisdom teeth and breast augmentation. Great. Okay. So, and, uh, and do you take any medications? No. I would recommend a few things for you. Okay. I recommend a prenatal vitamin as a multivitamin for women. Okay. Even if you're not actively trying to get, because I think it's very well balanced for a reproductive age woman. Okay. Omega-3 DHA, I prescribe a, a brand that um, is plant-based, not fish-based. So it's mercury free. Take it for long periods of time and it's good for your female body. Okay. The other ones that I think would be excellent for you is called CoQ10. Mm, it's an antioxidant. The strongest and purest form of CoQ10 is called ubiquinol. And okay. studies have shown that if you take 600 milligrams a day, it slows down the actual aging of all the cells of your body, including the cells of your ovaries and the eggs. I like that. Okay. okay. The one vitamin I would give you, which I wouldn't give the average patient if their fertility was excellent, is something called DHEA. Mm -hmm. And DHEA is not something you take forever like those other three you could. Okay. Is a DHEA is a hormone that converts in the body to estrogen. You're supposed to take 25 milligrams three times a day. And it's good for women with low egg reserve because it gives you an it converts to estrogen, giving an extra environment of estrogen for these eggs that are going to be growing to grow in the best environment they can. Okay. Okay. So that's what I give for people with low egg reserve. Okay. So those are the so four things you should those. be on. How long yes. do I need to be on them before I do the retrieval? No egg is changing. You're not making new eggs, but it just from here moving forward, it's just helping you hold on to stuff. Okay. So I have a rule. You never postpone anything for an egg, for an egg retrieval. Okay. Postponing things for women is the worst and number one thing that they can do to themselves. What, what does it look like to freeze my eggs? So what, what's so, the timing? Now that we got you supplemented. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the way that this is going to work is you're going to call us on the first day of your period. Okay. Okay. Taking on day two, three or four of your cycle, you are going to come in for blood work and ultrasound. Okay. You are going to go ahead and have some blood tests done that are hormones that again will tell me how your fertility is. Okay. Um, and those blood tests that we do to check your fertility are FSH, LH, estradiol, prolactin, and thyroid, TSH. Some of them are indirectly related to fertility. Some of them are directly related to fertility. Um, but overall speaking, they are important things that we check. So okay. those are important. And we do those on day two, three, or four. You have your AMH already done. And we need an STD panel that is mandatory by the state of California and the FDA to freeze okay. your eggs and put them in a clinic. Great. Okay. So those are basically all of the things. We always check a CBC, which is a total blood count. Mm -hmm. And I always check a vitamin D because I think vitamin D has a lot to do with many things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's important to make sure your vitamin D is normal. And then you go on a birth control pill. And the reason we put people on birth control is so that it stops their cycle. And as a result of stopping the cycle, you do not ovulate that month. Okay. You go on birth control for something between like eight to 14, 15 days, your cycle stops. And as when your cycle stops, then we proceed um, and we get your medic, we get the injections going. The injections are going to help trigger the pituitary gland in your brain to trigger your ovary. And then the ovary is going to make hormone called estradiol, which is a kind of estrogen, which is the fuel to grow eggs. Okay. And hopefully you'll make a lot of eggs that way. So basically you go in with the ultrasound and you look for follicles, right? Right. So the on the day that you do on day two, three or four, when you do that blood test and you do the ultrasound, the yeah. ultrasound is also looking at the ovary, counting these little bubbles you have, which are called antral follicles. Okay. That's called your antral follicle count. Mm -hmm. For example, one ovary is like six little follicles and one ovary is seven. Your total antral follicle count is 13. It means you have a decent ovary with good reserve of eggs. 
that number goes down when the AMH level goes down as well. Okay. What, how does that correlate to how many eggs you can get on retrieval? The higher the number of antral follicles, probably the more you're going to get. Once in a blue moon, we have someone that doesn't make a lot of antral follicles, but still responds really well to the medicine and is able to make more eggs than the number of antral follicles. And also once in a while, the opposite, people have a good number of antral follicles, not a lot of them respond to the medicine and not a lot grow. So I don't want anyone to be discouraged if their number is kind of lower. Okay. By the what way, talking about you know, the word like what, what do I want? <laughs> you, you know, to an extent you want more, the better. But once it starts to get more than 10 antral follicles on each ovary, then you fall into the polycystic ovary category. And then you have PCOS, which okay. I don't know if anyone wants, because unfortunately, the, you're, even though you make a lot of eggs, the quality of eggs is sometimes lower. So I go on birth control. I start the injections for two-ish weeks. 10 to 12 days of injections is average. Okay. And during the time that we have taught you, my nurses are going to teach you how to read your calendar. And every single day, it says what you're going to do on every day. And about four times, five times, you're going to come into the clinic for follow-up blood tests and ultrasounds to see how your estrogen level is rising and also to see how your eggs are growing. Okay. And then when do you decide to suck them out? <laughs> when you have a bunch of follicles that are between 18 and 20 millimeters, that's a really good time. And you correlate that so it falls something between day 10 and 12. And then you know that you're going to have probably mostly mature eggs. Okay. Okay. And if how you go too early, yeah. you get a lot of immature eggs. If you keep growing past and past and they get too big, then you're going to go post mature eggs. Yeah. We don't want old ones. So then you decide, you look at my ovaries and I have like a whole lot of eggs, follicles, whatever. They're juicy and full. Yes. And, and then they're, they're I cooked perfectly. They're cooked to perfection. Yes. And then I come in and what does the surgery look like? So I don't even want to call it a surgery. Okay. okay. The procedure takes anywhere between three to 10 minutes. It's under a local sedation where the anesthesiology team is going to give you in your IV a little bit of propofol where you fall asleep uh -huh. and you're good to go. Okay. You don't remember anything. You don't feel anything. And you wake up and you were done. You okay. were breathing on your own the entire time. An ultrasound is placed vaginally with a special little needle at the tip of it that is going to help retrieve the eggs one by one. It goes through a tubing into a little test tube and the test tube gets passed to the IVF lab and the IVF lab keeps counting and counting and counting the number of eggs. So how fast do I know the result? When you wake up. Shut up. Yeah. So we will tell you the number of eggs when you wake up and then my team has to do a double count and a check to see which ones are mature. Only mature eggs can be frozen because the immature ones are no good. You're here for something between an hour and a half to two hours maximum. Great. And then what is By the my time you get here and leave and the procedure and sorry? What does my recovery look like? Depends. If you have a lot of eggs, uh -huh. you're going to be a little crampy and a little bloated. And okay. it takes sometimes about a week to shrink back down. If you have very few eggs, people are really back to normal very, very quickly. Okay. And so there's like no surgical incision. It's all up my vagina. Zero. There are no incisions, no sewing, no cutting, none of that. It's a needle that goes through the vaginal wall and goes right into the ovary. And it just comes out and it heals itself and it stops bleeding and it's done. Great. So then I get my eggs. What's like an ideal number of eggs that I want? Really hard question to answer like that. Do you want one kid or do you want seven kids? I want I mean. Four. So someone who wants four kids should have a good number of eggs. And in my eyes, that means definitely over 20. Okay. You just don't know to get over 20 eggs. Yeah. Well, you may not get them in one cycle, mm -hmm. but you may get them in more than one cycle. Some people do in one cycle. Not me. Not with my, not with well, my. Well, this is the situation. I'm not that hopeful, to be honest. Like, I'm like. You are. I, so I one of the things we're going to do, I promise, before this call is done, is we're going to change your attitude. Okay. Because I promise you, with negativity, excessive worrying, and being really sad about this process, 
you will do really poorly and give me very poor quality eggs. Oh, no, we can't have that. I have had a patient of mine who was the most positive human being I ever met. She made one egg and that egg led to her beautiful child. Oh, that's all it takes. You're yeah. here because you want to do well and you want everyone else to do well. And I know how good you are at this to bring positivity into this whole thing. Yes, for sure. I'm a firm believer that your mental status during this process is incredibly important. Now, if you want, I don't know if you knew this, but SCRC, as of last month, has a full-time acupuncturist and nutritionist in-house. What? So if you wanted to meet with either of them okay. to go over diets that are full of antioxidants and energy-provoking and really healthy for you, and acupuncture to calm you and keep you nice and relaxed, we are more than welcome to introduce it to them. Well, and I think anything that helps, that's the one thing that like I've been thinking about the whole time. I'm like... Honestly, I agree with you. And I say this, like, this maybe sounds terrible, but like with, with getting pregnant, I'm like, it literally takes one, like you need one good spermie to get into that egg and one good egg, like one moment. And so I'm with you on that. I just, I think I've been down on like the fact that my AMH is low and like the frustration behind that of like, I wish I would have known. And so that's why I'm glad I'm here. I, I don't think, by the way, you need to, to go like, what number of eggs do I need? Everyone's different. I've had people make over 20 eggs and didn't get a baby out of it. Okay. And I know that the, this is why it's incredibly important. The quality of the IVF lab and the process of freezing and thawing are so incredibly important. Okay. And there are people that do this in places where the lab quality is not very good. Even if their egg was good, if a poor lab quality, it's not going to let the egg do well. So I think that the smartest and best advice that I give everyone is that the more eggs you have, the better it is. Yeah. And I don't know if that's going to happen in one cycle. I have a lovely patient who's actually back now after a few years of being gone. And she did five cycles of egg freezing. Now, that's not the typical patient as well, but she didn't find them to be hard and she did them. All right. Well, round one has begun how it goes <laughs> we had to make pull this the rope let's on the bell let's, let's move it let's let's, yeah. let's get me some babies and at least like at least for me i feel like honestly to invest in anything there's like probably nothing more important to me than having babies especially doing what i do and so it's like I, I, it just would be silly. Like I will regret this more than maybe anything in my life if I don't do well, it. Well, I, I appreciate that you know that, mm -hmm. but the, I also have patients of mine that aren't necessarily as 100% as you. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, I've seen this so many times that I get a 39 year old, 40, 41 year old woman that calls me and says, I really thought I did not want to have any kids my whole life. And now I'm realizing I do. And that's a good point. Sometimes it's too late. So yeah. I think that even if there is a tiny chance, tiny chance that you may want to have a family in the future, it's something to think about. Totally. The other thing that I, I think I heard you say on a live somewhere, like you were doing an Instagram live or something that I thought was really insightful that maybe you could expand upon was if you want subsequent children, because there's a chance, like, let's say I meet right. the love of my life tomorrow and he knocks me up, oopsies. And I'm like, okay, let's have a baby. Like, let's say I get pregnant with this first one. What does that mean for like, but I have these eggs on reserve. So that's a really, really smart comment to talk about because I have patients that call me and they're like, you know, I tried this month and I hope I get pregnant and I want to have three more kids and I'm 39 and a half years old. I'm thinking in my head, I hope you don't get pregnant this month. If you get pregnant at 39 and a half and deliver at 40, the next time you're going to be calling me, you're going to be 42, 43 years old. And guess what? If you've been having a hard time now, it's going to be much harder then. Mm -hmm. In a way, you are shooting yourself in the foot. And for that reason, it's very smart to assess what you need to do for your entire fertility career, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is your entire process of trying to get babies and have kids. You need to think about it in advance. So yeah. you're right. If it's for subsequent babies, it's even more important to think ahead. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people that are in relationships are not thinking about that in the future. It's only single women thinking about their eggs down the future. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, and for me, it's like by the time, like say I have a baby by 34 and I get pregnant naturally, but by 36 or something, my egg reserve has gotten even worse and I can't get pregnant. My mom had secondary infertility, actually. She had such it a- It happens all 
good times. But so, you're doing all the right things. And we are here to support you. I have an amazing team here, amazing team that are going to hold your hand. We all are. And we're going to be here for you. And you can reach out to me any time of day or night. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm excited. I'm like, I'm hopeful. I am. So, I'm going to, I'm going to only say positive vibes going forward okay. and all the little babies that are sitting in my ovaries that will eventually come out someday. I'm going to tell, send all the positive. I have a, I'm going to tell you the craziest story. I have oh. a patient of mine. She froze her eggs a long time ago. She just came back and said, I got married. And she's like, I want to do one more cycle to make just a couple more eggs. And I'm like, okay, you're a little older. She made two eggs. Okay. Both eggs fertilized. Both eggs grew to the full grown stage. And both eggs came back genetically normal. And she had two more embryos out of that. Oh. She sent me a picture of the her bathroom mirror. She had drawn two huge eggs and babies inside of them. And oh. she's like, I visualize this every single day. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna work out some sort of visualization mantra for myself. I'm gonna draw something on my mirror. And yes, and you're gonna I'm take a growing, picture. I'm growing all of my children. I'm gonna picture all of my children sitting in my little ovaries, like, hey mom, <laughs> as I as I go through this process, like waiting for you. You know what? It's 100% I want you to do that. Okay. And if it's any motivation to you, I'm going to show you, this is my little family picture, by the way. Oh, oh my. And God. these two are my twins from IVF. Oh my gosh. Amazing. So yeah, this was, this is them. And we had, after my oldest had a really hard time getting pregnant, got pregnant and then had to, actually did not have a hard time getting pregnant, got pregnant, had a miscarriage. And then for two years, we didn't get pregnant. We did six IUIs, and then it led to us doing IVF instead. And we got the boy and the girl we wanted. Oh, my God. And then had another surprise baby after that. So <laughs> A little extra bonus thrown in there. Yes, exactly. So we're here. I get what you're going through, okay? You're going to go through it. I know it's going to be tough, but you're going to do the best you can do. And you're going to be proud of yourself for doing the best you can do. Because you can't do better than the best. That's right. I'm with you. Okay. I'm going to do my best. Can we exactly. talk pricing really quickly? Because I know everyone sure. wants to know that. I, know I will that. be honest. Yeah. I'm the absolute worst person to ask any pricing questions. Overall, like say nationwide, what would somebody expect to pay? Um, egg freezing is probably, I'd say, it's going to be something between like $5,000 and $12,000, depending on where you go in the country. Okay. So it's All a big right. range. But again, you got to be very careful. Sometimes you get what you pay for. So yep. make sure that, you know, we, we have a big lab, so we can do a lot, but sometimes you get a very small lab with not very fancy technology, and then you get poor quality freezing, and that could be a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're in LA, they should come to you at SCRC. Well, I'm very biased that I think Southern California Reproductive right. Center or SCRC is probably one of the best labs in the entire country. And that's honestly what I found in all of my research when I found you. It was like, even, even like the amount that you've been published and like you've been on different things as the expert, I see all your awards behind you. I mean, it was like, it was pretty clear in my research that that was the case. Well, thank you. Uh, You're very smart and you did great research and I appreciate that. I do a lot of, I do not take any of this lightly. And that's one of the things I tell my pregnant families is that the doctor you choose, the facility you choose to birth at is one of my top five most important things that you oh my god to. yes absolutely absolutely so, and i would say the same thing for anything medical and anything this like sensitive this like personal and meaningful of course like if you're i suppose if you're like going to get your blood drawn like you can go to some so long as they're sterile and they don't like you know they use sterile technique <laughs> Clean. But otherwise, like for something like this, you really should be going somewhere where that is reputable, that is, that it's worth. And it, if it means anything, I just want to let you know, all the docs from uh, Cedars and all the docs from UCLA's and fertility departments and about 29 of the doctors in town actually do their IVF cases in our lab. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. See, and especially from a medical perspective, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable. It's well, such a good consult. I know, I know. I'm really I'm so excited. excited. I'm very you. excited for you. I'm very, very excited for you. I'm, I'm excited too. I'm excited to take the plunge. It feels like a huge relief to know that like, I have a team, I have a facility, like even that as a foundation moving forward, we have a plan. So then going forward, I guess I'll just call you guys when I get my period. 
you're going to call us the first day of your period so we can get going. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. Bye. Good luck. You're going to do you. great. It's so nice to meet you. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. It's not fair that I have to pay all this money and put my body through this just because I wanted to have a career and I haven't met a man. It's not fair.